coming up at one thirty. Uh, Lake about the moves they made so far. When you start these things, everyone thinks you have a grand plan. You kind of have multiple plans, right? <laughs> right. You know, sure, really, sure. Some things throw you for a loop. I mean, has been chronicled. You know, we we're going after a couple different people, <laughs> big additions, and there are three ways to get better in this league, right? One is to draft, the building through the draft. Another is free agency, and the final one is trades. And trades are the hardest. Very, very hard to pull off trades because everyone wants to prove how you know these GMs how smart they are. <laughs> and they, it's true. they're it's true and they want to impress their owners sometimes they do sometimes they don't but here's the problem it's just very people i think if i could share anything with many of the fans out there and i read everything you know i read what people say and the criticisms and the positive things they don't understand how hard it is and how illogical some of the parties on the other side are sometimes Maybe we're illogical too to some extent, but my point is it's just really, really hard to pull these things off and everyone writes all this stuff and they have no idea what the other side's asking for in some of these things. We say that a lot too, Shasky, when we talk and we have these discussions and we're talking about it from our point of view, right, for our teams, and we always mention that, hey, well, what about the other side of things? How do they view our players? Because I always, I always love with fans say, man, this player's trash. Like, we could say, man, come here, get an all-star. He's blah, 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 da, 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 da. Hey, get rid of him. But then you want to get rid of him for all-star players. <laughs> I'm like, wait, it, we're not making sense here. But then the other side of it, to Lakeup's point, it's very hard to make trades. Everybody's trying to get over on everybody. Everybody's trying not to get jobbed here, not to get ripped off and look like the dummy where it's like, oh, damn, we gave up that for that. So Lake of is right. And I do love the honesty where it's like, I do see what's going on online. Just I read it, everything. I see the negative. I see the positive. And people don't understand it. Some of these people are just lunatics. They don't know that it takes two to tango. The trade thing. I do think we think it's easier to trade than than I think that common fan thinks it's easier to trade yep. than it actually There's is. No doubt in our leagues, in our fantasy leagues, you guys are all in fantasy leagues. It's really hard to to consummate trades. It really and this is. This isn't fantasy where we're playing for like a hundred bucks. It really is, right? Like nobody's really playing for big, 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 big money. Not like it is in the NBA where, or in Major League Baseball, or the NFL, where your career is on the line with some of these moves. Uh, the other thing is that I do believe this. Everyone views Steph currently Steph Curry the same way in the league. Like, yeah, he's freaking awesome. We'd love to have him. It's the guys like Kaminga and Pajemski and Moses Moody. You're going to get different POVs based on who you're talking to. And yep. two coaches who are both great at what they do might look at someone and say, yeah, it's not going to work for me. Right. right. So, for example, I look at Andy Reid, and there are certain guys that I know will work perfectly for Andy Reid that I don't think would work for Belichick. I think they're both great coaches, you know, but right. the the way that they view players and how they're assessing things and then how they're going to utilize them in their scheme is right. different. And I'm not pretending like I am a professional at anything, but like there's times where we have, we assess certain kids in certain positions and I'm like, yeah, I see this guy at this position. And then one of my other coaches is like, no, 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 no. I think he can only play here, here and right. here. And then through trial and error, you get a chance to see, and you know what happens a lot of times? We're all wrong. Right. And and we're completely right. proven wrong yeah. because the person actually can do way more or yep. do way less yep. than what we anticipated. So um, all the things he's saying, no one wants to listen to. Yeah. But he is right. He's 100% he right. He is right. I know you don't want to hear no, it. No, he's 100 That's why the whole Danny Ainge thing, when it came to marketing in the first place, mm -hmm. it was like, oh, we could just get this, guy, get this guy for peanuts because he's on an expiring deal. It's like, wait a minute. Danny Ainge is running that show mm -hmm. over there. Do we not know about Danny Ainge? Have we forgot the Scotter report on Danny Ainge, the executive, on how he operates and how many picks he hoarded in Boston because he was scared to make a deal He's or he was trying to rip he was trying to rip people off. But as you were saying that, I thought of Debo Samuel, like systems, right? Great point. Great Debo's call. Debo's not on his top 10 list on ESPN, and this is per executives, NFL executives, coaches, and scouts. Debo is not mentioned as a top 10 wide receiver. He's an honorable mention. Hell, Cooper Cup is not, not even mentioned as a top 10 wide receiver, which is crazy, right? Cooper Cup, probably due to health or whatnot. But would Debo work in Seattle? I think he'd work in Kansas City. Andy Reid would figure out a way to use him. But would he work in Seattle? Would he work in Arizona? Would he work in Chicago? Yeah. Would he work in Minnesota? Would he work in Green Bay? I, I don't know. You know, certain players fit certain schemes. Like Percy Harvin couldn't play for just any team. No. He was a playmaker, no. a damn good player, but he couldn't play. Carlos Hyde, another example. 
Can he play the I formation? No. He was great in the gun run where he averaged over five yards per carry, but if he lined up behind the quarterback and they were under center, his yards per carry went down to like three and a half. I don't think even, like, let's just say, like, Steph Curry, pick a coach. Like, Chuck Daly has, and I'm just using him as an example, and right. I'm sure he would evolve his thinking, but are we sure Steph evolves into the Steph that he becomes with Chuck Daly? I think Chuck Daly's a, one of the all-time great coaches. Well, Larry Brown, is, are we sure? Are we sure they run offense the same way? I don't know. Maybe they do. I I don't know. I know he's won a variety of ways. He has. better with Steph with, and I'm not trying to throw shade to Mark Jackson, but how much better is he with Steve Kerr than he was with Mark Jackson? Yeah. He went to another level oh, with Steve No Kerr. doubt. No doubt. So I'm, but I'm just comparing like the all-time greats. Right, all you know time. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and no like, doubt. Look, at Larry Brown is a good example because he realized, oh, Rip Hamilton comes off of screens really right. well. Let's let's utilize that. Oh, Allen Iverson needs to have the ball in his right. hands. Like he was very yep. adaptive. But again, yep. I'm not 100% sure that everything looks exactly the same. Who does Draymond Green work with? Yeah. I mean, no doubt. maybe Phil uses him. Right. Maybe he doesn't. Yeah. I don't know. Like, so to your point, yeah, like when you're making these trades, how is Kaminga viewed? I bet Eric Spolstra views Kaminga differently than Steve Kerr. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I'm not even saying that's a good or a bad thing. I'm right. just saying I think they look at the game differently. Ty Lue is it's on Ty the same Lue. bitch. How does he look at Kaminga? That's a good question. You know what I'm saying? How does Nick JJ Nurse. Reddick, Nick Nurse, all these guys? Yeah. So different Tibbs. systems, different players. So Tibbs. to Lake, I'm glad I'm glad Lake said that, and I know he's going to get a lot of blowback for that. But it's not easy making trades. People just send a dead picture, get marketing. Why don't we have marketing right now? It's like. Like to your point, it is hard to make trades in fantasy football. It's hard to make trades in fantasy basketball. So I was like, my team days at Wall Street Hustler, I was always known to give like, here, I'll give you five players for two. Yeah. No, those two great players are great. Those other pieces are, and other people are like, uh, I don't know about that. Why are you giving me five points? So it's it's not easy making trades. I'm glad Lakeham said that. I really am. And we got more Lakeham sounds for later on. <laughs> we got another call. We, we are so wacky. These last hours have been wacky, but it's a little odd. You know why? Fun. The, the ADD really kicks in on this show in the last no. couple hours. See, see, here now you go. imagine the no. afternoon. You're ADD. I admit it. <laughs> I admit it. And I just fall out of it. It's fun, though. It's fun. We're having a lot of fun. My, son, Guerrero. And my son is just, he's like, we call it the witching hour in the final couple hours where he gets Scott very Hansen. goofy. Scott Hansen. I mean, he's jumping, oh, yeah. around, he's jumping around in this jumpy thing that he has. He looks like a leprechaun. Oh, the last two hours of a kid's day is it's, always fun. Ooh, it's ooh, our spin ooh. movement. It's our rapid and social sure personality. Exactly. I love it. I have a lot of fun with it. Uh, all right. We're giving away an autographed Clay Thompson jersey Friday. Listen at 811 with Willard and Dibs. With Willard and Dibs. Uh, 111 with Chasky and I. And then 511 with Starting and Guru for your chance. We win an autograph. Go to State Warriors. Clay Thompson jersey. What's coming up on the game brought to you by Fremont Bank. Celebrating 60 years.